In this video, I'm going to show you what the trends are that you should be paying attention to as a service designer. And the show is starting right now. Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome to the Service Design Show. If you want to design services that are good for people and business, then you've come to the right place. One of the ways we're doing that is through these trend reports. These trend reports help you to make better decisions today by showing you where service design is heading tomorrow. So we're going to look at the highlights of the last 10 episodes and the things that you should be paying attention to. If you're curious about the previous trend reports, check them out over here. And if you want to take your service design skills to the next level, I would love to have you to subscribe to the channel so you can keep bringing you more videos like this. And if you're watching this video, make sure to leave a comment about what you see as the big trend that is shaping service design. All right, let's look at the trends right now, one by one. The first trend I want to talk about is technology and specifically is technology a threat or an opportunity for service designers? This is the era of cognitive computing. And the challenge I have as a designer is I turn up in a room um, with me, me post-it notes and me pens <laughs> and, and, and the reality is, is that the machines are doing it all by themselves. It's like, well, I'm, yeah. am, I, am, I, am I relevant? I mean, I'm using analog tools. Yes, we love to work in an analog way. That's who we are. That's what we do. And we love that. We're really good at it. But we're not that good at adopting new technology really fast to enhance our design process, not as quickly as other fields do. Why is that? Especially now that new technology like AI and VR is becoming accessible on a practical level for almost anyone. So think about this. How could we use things like AR for pattern recognition in data analysis? How could we use AI, for instance, to create on the fly visual mood boards to um, bring ideas to life? Or how could we use VR to prototype service experiences? These are just a few ideas on how we might be able to use new technology to enhance our design process. The reason why I'm so curious about this specific trend is I think it will allow us to overcome some of the human limitations we have and eventually help us to design better services faster. For instance, by allowing us to take a more holistic view and create more realistic prototypes. The second trend is actually a question. And the question is, what is our added value today and what will it be tomorrow? And this was triggered by some of the conversations we had in the past in episodes regarding service design moving from agencies to in-house teams and how does service design relate to other disciplines within an organization? What happens when everyone goes in-house? What happens when organizations no longer want to pay for you know, consultancy? And how far can we take this service design thing um, before we all realize that ultimately it's better in-house, or is it? <laughs> there is an undeniable movement that service design is moving from agencies to in-house teams. And this raises the question, what do these in-house teams add to the existing business? According to Mauro Pocini, he said, the business feels that it owns strategy, marketing feels that it owns the customer, so what does design add? Well, design adds the ability to prototype ideas. One of the big drivers of this movement to in-house team is really implementation. Companies feel that they can implement ideas better and faster when they have in-house teams. They start to see service design as a real core competence that will allow them to create a competitive advantage. Uh, but if we as a community, we want to impact and influence the business, if we want to change the world, if we want to create value for people and society, then we need to interface ourselves with the business. So we need designers that can talk that kind of language, that can interact with the business world, and that can articulate the value of what we do for them so that they can empower us to change the world. So these teams really need to show their added value and be really clear about what that is. It's all about how we position ourselves within an organization. And we have to understand what we give to and take from the organization. Regarding this trend, it's really important that you understand what you're worth and that you know how your role is changing so that you can anticipate to that. Know what makes you unique and communicate that and also think about how can you transform to the next level when an in-house design team starts taking over your existing role? So I think if we really want to have meaningful change, if we want to grow internally, externally, we should look for bigger problems to solve. 
The third trend I want to talk about is about building service design capacity, democratizing service design and scaling service design. And it relates to the previous trend we talked about and it has been mentioned in a lot of the previous trend reports. It's all about making service design business as usual. In the past 10 episodes, we had a quite interesting angle on this topic, and that was by Doc Powell, who's tasked with scaling service design on a global level within IBM. And that raises the question, what do we actually want to scale when we talk about scaling service design? Uh, well, we we want to scale output eventually. Uh, I mean, we want to scale the um, the productivity of designers and the teams that they're working on. Um, you know, we want to take, you know, uh, a we want to to replicate a high functioning team. You know, we want to figure out what's working with that team, and we want to do that twenty or a hundred or five hundred times over. You know, uh, that's 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 what scaling means. It's undeniable that the demand for design capacity is growing. It's driven by success stories from companies like IBM, PepsiCo and institutes like the British government, but also by research is done by McKinsey, Forrester and Adobe that show the added value of design to business. When we're scaling service design, it's really important that we keep in mind that it's all about giving everyone the capacity to participate in the design process, but it's not about making everyone an expert or a trained designer. So I compare this to giving everyone the ability to read and write without expecting them to write best-selling novels. I really think service design is an art or hmm. It's, hmm. it's, you really need experts. So as a service design community, I think we should be really humble about the expectations we set regarding making people an expert service designer. But we can be really bold about how people, how much people can contribute in the design process. So these are the highlights that I found in the past 10 episodes, but I'm really curious to learn what you see as the big trend that is shaping service design. Leave a comment down below and share that with the community. Also, what are your thoughts on technologies like AI and how could they assist in the design process? Also, make sure to leave a comment on that. If you want to check out some of the past trend reports, click over here and I would love to have you to subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn how to explain service design without making it sound like brain surgery, check out the free course that I've got over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.